the Lord. If you have your Bible with you this morning, if you don't, there's one in front there if you want to use one there on the pew. Matthew the ninth chapter. Matthew the ninth chapter, the 35th verse. Matthew 9 and 35. Hallelujah. When you have it, say Amen. amen. Matthew 9 and 35. The Bible says, and this might sound familiar to you, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when He saw the multitudes, the Bible says He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. He goes on to say in verse 27, Then saith He unto His disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that He will send forth laborers into His harvest. We find here, as we have been talking about the last the past three weeks, we find Jesus ministering, going from city to city, city and village to village, and healing, the Bible says, healing diseases and ministering the gospel, preaching the gospel to them. When he saw all of the hurting people, when he saw, and this is what he's calling the harvest. He wasn't talking about a cornfield, he's talking about a, the, the world and the people that were in it. Amen? Amen. And he says, when he saw them, when he saw Sister Nancy that they fainted, when he saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd, when he saw that they were troubled and they were, they, they, they were hurting and that they were lost, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. You know, I got to thinking about that. There's a lot of things that move us. Amen? Amen. Anger, strife, jealousy, Oh, amen. amen. We ain't talking about corn this morning, but I can plow some. Amen. Yeah. All the things that move us. But Jesus was moved with compassion. When He saw those that were hurting, when He saw those that were lost, when He saw those that fainted, the Bible says He was moved with compassion. Amen. And He turns to His disciples, and we've been reading this, you know this, I'm going to move on to something else I didn't get to get to last Sunday, but... He turns to his disciples and he says, Listen, boys, I want you to pray. I want you to pray that we can build a big church in a fancy neighborhood and hang our crystal chandeliers and the plushest of carpets. Oh, I don't think he said none of that, did he? Amen? No, he wasn't looking for a big church. Amen? He wasn't looking for fancy pastors with theological degrees. And I'm not saying anything wrong with your education. Amen? You're smarter than I am. Thank God for that. But he said, pray, not for those things, but pray that laborers will be sent into the field to gather the harvest. Amen? We need laborers today. We got enough preachers with enough degrees on their walls, enough of them to choke the devil. Amen? We got fancy preachers and fancy sermons and fancy suits and fancy churches, but we had very few people preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in the day that we live in. We have very few preachers that are moved with compassion. Amen? Oh, they're moved by your tithe fan. Amen? They're moved by the kind of car you drive. They're moved by the kind of suit you wear. But very few preachers this morning are moved with compassion and that's what we need. Amen. We need preachers that are moved with compassion. We need saints, amen, that, that are not preachers per se. Amen. All of us are preachers in one form or another. But we need Sunday school teachers moved with compassion. We need deacons moved with compassion. Oh, we may need them move them out. Amen. So, but we need board members moved with compassion. We need church people, born again believers, moved with compassion. Amen. That when we look on the field, we realize that the harvest not only is plenteous, but it's precious. And that time is running out. 
And we find ourselves the same place today and we're way past where Jesus was at in that day. You know, we talked about the man that went out and he hired laborers at daylight and he hired laborers at the... What did he hire them at? The third hour and the sixth hour and the ninth hour and the eleventh hour? We're at the eleventh hour. Amen? Matter of fact, the clock is about to strike midnight. Amen? And as the Father looks across the field, He still sees that the harvest is plenteous, but there ain't enough laborers. laborers. Amen? There ain't enough people working in the field, and we're about to run out of daylight. Amen? How many people ever had a job to where you had to get, get the job finished before it got dark? Amen? And you was working hard. We got to hurry up. We got to get this done. Well, that's the way it is in the work of the Lord today. Jesus turned to him one time and said that I must work the work of the Father while I'm here. Amen? But the night soon cometh when no man can work. Amen. And that's where we're at. Nightfall's coming. Amen. And the harvest is still plenteous. And the laborers are still few. We ain't never had more people that claim they're Christian. Amen. Everybody you meet. Amen. Amen. Bud in one hand, marble in the other. I'm saved. Amen. Token a joint, hooked on marijuana, booze, alcohol, whatever it is. I'm saved. What are you saved from? Amen. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know how you got saved, but when I got saved, Hallelujah, something changed. Amen. Amen. We have book. We have book uh, conversions. Amen. They get their name on the book and they think that's it, but that ain't it. God just don't want your name in the book. Amen. Not the book here on this planet anyway. He wants your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and when that happens, Paul said, "Old things passed away, and all things became new for him." Amen. Amen. Now we still all sin, we still all have flesh. I ain't saying sinless perfection here in this body, but I'm telling you something's going to change. Amen? Amen? You don't go around still talking on your joint. Amen? Talking about how you're saved and know God. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I could preach that this morning, but I ain't going to. So Jesus moved with compassion, and we learned how that the Bible teaches us that we are like workers, supposed to be. We're like workers for the kingdom of God. And I told you about how that there's assembly lines and how that in the field there are different jobs for different people. And we looked at how that for each of us in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, there is something that we all can do. You are a witness to someone. No man is an island. Amen? No man liveth unto himself and no man dieth unto himself. You interact with people all the time. You may not have a congregation that you stand before on Sunday morning. You may not have a church that has a window with you with your name, Pastor So and So, on the window. Amen. But you are an example to somebody. You do come in contact with somebody every week, every day, every aspect of your life. Somehow or another, you come in contact with somebody that is lost. Amen. Amen. Every one of us have the light inside of us. And Jesus said for us to let that light shine before men. Amen. Yet we find ourselves so many times as the old song that we've related to several times since we've been talking on this topic. My house is full. My field is empty. No one will go and work in the field. Amen. Everybody wants to sit around my table but nobody wants to take care of the harvest or the work at hand. And that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about being laborers. We've been talking about, what well, we talked about the next week, we talked about all of us being members of the body. We talked about unwanted body parts. Amen? That in the body of Christ, we feel as if there are those members that we would be better off without. Even though God's, God it uses the example of the human body, amen, and the members, our nose and our eyes and our ears, and I couldn't get one of you to donate me an ear. I couldn't get one of you to get rid of your pinky. I couldn't get one of you to get rid of one of your toes. But... You'd like to get rid of some of them people you've been sitting on the pew with. Amen? You'd like to get rid of some of them people that you think the church or the body of Christ would be better off without. Amen. Brother Willie. That's good preaching. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. And we talked about how that Paul talks about how that the nose, and this is not a quote. I'll give you the scripture. It's, let me find it. 1 Corinthians. Romans 12 and 4, many members, one body. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12 and 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't have no need of you. 
I can't say this morning that I'll have no need of Brother Bill just because I don't like him or don't like his ways, don't like his looks. Amen. Although that's how we treat the members of the body sometimes. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way they looked at me. I don't like their attitude. I don't like the way they smell. I don't like the way they are. I don't like the way they dress. Amen. So we feel like they are dispensable parts of the body. But Paul said that all of the members of the body are needful today. Amen. All of the I don't care how ugly you was when you looked in the mirror this morning, God can use you. I don't care how pretty you was when you looked in the mirror this morning, God can use you. I don't know, I don't care how talented you feel or how how untalented you feel. God can use you. There is something for you to do. Brother Billy, I've heard this. Yeah, I know you've heard this. But it'd probably shame us off. I asked you what you did this week. Amen. Oh, we've been talking about how all of us can do something. Yeah, but have any of us did it? Amen? It's one thing to sit on the fence and tell the guy how to ride the horse. It's another thing to get down and walk over and get on the horse yourself. Amen? And begin to do something for the kingdom of God. And I'm talking, I ain't talking necessarily about preaching this morning. Brother Billy, I can't preach. Listen, there's a million things to do besides preaching. I can't sing. There's a million things to do besides singing. Somebody somewhere is lost and undone and needs your light to shine into their life one way or the other. You touch people's lives and you leave them either better off or worse off than they were whenever you path by their path. Amen? All of us today have something to do. Amen. So we learn how that the body needs all of its parts. As a matter of fact, Paul would even go so far to say that the members which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Necessary. All of you are necessary. Every one of you. I know sometimes you feel like, well, I can't do nothing for God. <clears throat> I'm not anybody. I can't do nothing. Well, listen, you you almost on the right track. Except you're keeping that from letting you do anything. Amen? We do need to realize this morning we are nothing without Him. Amen? We can do nothing without Him. But we also need to realize that we can do all things through Christ. That there is something for me to do. That there are people I can witness to. That there is something that in the work and the kingdom of God that I can contribute to. Amen? Amen? We learned about how that it was like workers in the field. We learned about how that it was like members of the body. And then we learned last week when we talked about passing by the lame man at the gate. And I ask you this question. Peter and John goes up and we all know it. Brother Beals preached on it. I've preached on it. Every preacher's probably preached on it one time or another. I asked the third chapter. We find Peter and John, Brother Beals, going up to the temple at the hour of prayer and we find them looking at the, the lame man and telling the lame man to look on them and saying, silver and gold have I none. And we look at what we like to preach at and that's good and that's great and that's true. But the Lord asked me this question. He said, Billy Ray, he calls me every now and then. Look at that. You always talk about the two that stopped. What about all those that didn't? Brother Bill, do you think that Peter and John were the only two that went up that morning to, uh, to the temple to the hour of prayer? I don't. I think there was a whole slew of religious people that went up to the temple that day. Amen? Oh, I think they went up to do their duty. And I told that brother from Bowling Green yesterday, that's exactly what it was, too. Duty. Amen? If that's what you think you're doing this morning is your duty, you're right. That's the way it smells in the nostrils of God. Amen? Your duty. All these people going up. Maybe some of them didn't even look at him. I told you last week, they didn't want no eye contact with him, Sister Nancy. Afraid they'd feel, you know, conviction. So they go up there to do their religious part, you know, and they pass on by. But thank God somebody had a heart. Somebody was moved with the same kind of compassion that Jesus was moved with when He looked on the multitude that fainted. Peter and John were moved with compassion when they saw the lame man at the gate that had been laid for, for years and laid there day after day after day, hurting and lost and, and, and sick. So many religious people walked right on past Him. Too busy didn't care, didn't want to get their hands dirty, something or another, don't have time to be bothered with Him. Don't tell how many people passed by Him. Some of Jesus' people even did it. You might be sitting there today and saying, well, it was probably Pharisees and Sadducees. And, yeah, it was probably some of them Pentecostals too. Amen. 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 Probably some, may have been some of those, oh, I bet it was. Oh, could I preach this morning? I bet it was some of them old boys that staggered out of the day of Pentecost that was full of the Holy Ghost and they thought they was drunk. Amen? 
But he ain't got no time for the lame man at the gate. Amen. But he ain't got no time for the man in the ghetto. Amen. Oh, they got time to dance. They got time to jump up here. They got time to talk in tongues. But they ain't got time for the one that is hurting. You are in trouble today if you are not moved by the compassion of God whenever you see somebody that's hurting. So they go right on past. They go right on past him going to the synagogue there at the temple and they do their religious stuff. Thank God Peter and John were moved with compassion and they stop. And the Bible says Peter reaches out and takes him by the hand and says in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise and walk. And he gets up and he starts leaping and he starts praising God and he goes into the temple with Peter and John. You ain't never going to get nobody to go into the temple with you as long as you keep acting the way you've been acting. Only one of my neighbors won't go to church with me. Well, probably because they keep seeing you throw them hissy fits you've been throwing. Amen. Amen. Read something this past week. It was a, there was a preacher. He's working on a fence and he's driving nails. And this little boy walks up and he's just watching. He ain't saying nothing. And the preacher's thinking, well, he nails some more and he nails some more. And the little boy just keeps watching and keeps watching. Finally, the preacher says, son, can I help you? What is it you need? What are you doing? He said, well, I'm just waiting to see what a preacher says when he hits his hand with the hammer. Amen. 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 Somebody's waiting. Oh, I can preach this morning if I can get any help at all. Somebody this morning is waiting to see how you act, Sister Nancy, when you hit your hand with a hammer. Come on. Amen. 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 Uh, and until you show them you got something that they don't, it ain't going to do you no good to invite them to church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It ain't going to do you no good to tell them how great your preacher is. Matter of fact, if you're living like the devil, I don't want them to know I'm your pastor. Come on. Amen. It ain't going to do you no good until they begin to see something in you. See, there was something in Peter and John. There was a compassion that moved them when they saw this lame man at the gate. Amen. Amen. Oh God, help us to wake up this morning. Help us to wake up this morning and see the lame man at the gate. We've walked past him for too long. We've ignored him for too long. We've stepped over him for too long. It's time for us to stop and say, Hey, I may not have exactly what you're looking for, but I got what you need. Amen. I know Jesus of Nazareth, oh, the blind man healer, the leopard cleanser from Galilee, and he's still the same today and he can heal you and deliver you from where you're at. Amen. So the lame man gets healed. And I told you last week, all those religious people that passed on by, they're in there. Oh, boy. Oh, Father God. All of a sudden they hear commotion in the back of the temple. Front, however you want to look at it. Coming in the door. It's that lame man. Yeah. Leaping. Giving praise. Him and Peter and John done having church. Amen. Yeah. While those other old religious hypocrites in there, blah, 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 blah. yeah. You're religious, all right, but you lost as a ball in high weeds. Oh, hallelujah. So we learned how that the lame man at the gate, Peter and John, moved with compassion. Oh, my goodness, church, we all need a dose of compassion today. Amen. Oh, we look at people many times, but we look at them with a judgmental attitude. Amen. Oh, my goodness. There's a song that we play on the radio. Oh, by the way, we heard from somebody in California yesterday. They said, out here we don't have the kind of music that y'all are playing. They said, we'll check, see if we can get you on the radio. We can't, so we'll listen to you on the internet. Hallelujah. My goodness. Isn't Lord wonderful? Amen. But we have so many people out there that are hurting and undone without God. Amen. And we just walk right on past them, right on by them. And if you'll go with me to Luke, the 10th chapter this morning, we'll look at somebody else. Hallelujah. That was moved with compassion. We're talking this morning about being useful in the kingdom of God. We're talking about no longer being a spiritual couch potato. We're talking about the fact that the, the field is white unto harvest, but the laborers are few. We're talking about today that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers 
are few. Amen. Luke the 10th chapter, 25th verse. The Bible says, And a certain lawyer stood up, now Jesus is teaching them, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now he wasn't really wanting to know so much as he were, was wanting to get Jesus caught in a trap, amen, and to tempt him to get him to say something, to slip up. You know how people do. Some of them religious deadheads get around you and they try to ask you some deep questions just so they can make you look like a fool. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, and I'm in Luke 10 and 27, He answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do, and thou shalt... What did he say? Live. Thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Don't that sound just like us? Don't that sound just like us trying to justify our actions? Amen? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. But who really is my neighbor? Oh, Jesus is getting ready to tell him. Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem in Jericho. And fell among thieves and went, that stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. I bet them old boys went to church somewhere. Yeah. And by chance, they came down, there came down a certain priest that way. Now surely, this priest, this holy man, surely this upright citizen, when he saw this man that had fell among thieves, surely he would be moved with compassion. He was moved, all right. But he wasn't moved with compassion. What's it say happen? When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. You know what? I bet that some of them holy guys that went up to the temple that day morning, I bet they did that too. I bet when they saw him, they thought, Hallelujah. Yeah. Got to get on in here to church. I got to go to church. Amen. Church is my life. I've heard people say church is my life. You're in trouble. Jesus better be. Right. Amen. Amen. Jesus better be because one day you ain't going to have no church. Maybe. Maybe. Amen. If church is your life, all they got to do is come close your doors and you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. You better know how to have church in here with just you and Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Because sooner or later it might come down to that. Sooner or later you may not have the privilege of coming in here on Sunday morning and listening to me preach. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Sooner or later you might find yourself in a place like these poor brothers and sisters over here in these countries over here. You may find yourself that you can't go this morning to church. Amen? Mm -hmm. you got to have you and Jesus going to have to have a little meeting by yourself so your church better not be your life. Mm -hmm. But that's what some of these people were. The temple was their life. Prayer was their life. Knowing the Word was their life. All that's great and good, but it better not be your life. Jesus better be the foundation and the center of your life. Amen? Amen. So, they, surely someone was sitting by thought, this holy man, surely he'll do something. Yeah, he did something, all right. Stepped over to the other side of the road. Said, I'm in a hurry. I've got my religious duty to do. Amen? I've got something to do. I've got some place to go. I can't have... He's unclean. I can't touch him. Amen. Amen. So he just hustles right on by. Probably like some of them men. Some of them men there. This, this guy may have been one of them that walked past the lame man at the gate there whenever he went up to the yeah. temple of prayer that morning. Amen. He might have walked right on past him too. Amen. I don't know. Hallelujah. But I'm sure if he walked by, unless something changed him, he would have walked right on past him because he did this man. He passed by on the other side of the road. And then the 32nd verse says, And likewise a Levite, when he was at that place, he came and looked on him. It ain't like this guy was hid in the bushes and they didn't see that he was hurting, he was beat, he was bleeding. This man, this Levite, looks on him. Huh. Then what's he do? Maybe he saw what his pastor did right, right ahead of him and he did the same thing because the Bible says that he looked on him and passed by on the other side. 
Anybody say follow the leader? I don't know that he saw that happen, but he might. And if he did, he thought, well, the priest ain't going to touch you. I ain't going to touch you. The preacher ain't going to have nothing to do with you. I ain't going to have nothing to do with you. Anyway, whatever the case may be, he walks right on past. He gets on the other side of the road and he goes on. None of these men are moved with compassion. They're moved with a lot of things. Amen? They're moved with a lot of things, but compassion is not one of them. we got a whole church full of people that follow the leader when it comes to the priest and the Levite. And then we find a Samaritan as he journeyed. And most scholars believe, of course the Bible doesn't tell us this, but because they, they believe that because this man, where was he at? He uh, had came from Jerusalem and was going to Jericho. Most of them believe there's a greater chance that he was a Jew than he was any other uh, nationality. So this Samaritan that's supposed to be enemies of the Jews, amen, uh, the priest wasn't this man's enemy more than likely. The Levite wasn't this man's enemy more than likely. Let me tell you something this morning. No, nobody can do you like a friend can do you. Amen. There ain't nobody can do you wrong like a Christian can do you wrong. Amen. I've been saved since I was five. been preaching since I was 25. Since I, I've been preaching for 25 years since I was 19 years old. Amen. So, and, and, and I can tell you this morning by personal experience, I have been done worse by people who claim to be Christian than I ever have anybody that claimed to be lost. Amen. So we find this Samaritan supposed to be the enemy of this guy. And when he saw him, what did he do? What's it say? Are you following me this morning? There's that long word. Oh my goodness, Brother Bill, don't say it. He had compassion on him. Now where have we read that word before? We read that word when we started this series three weeks ago. Amen? When Jesus looked on the multitude, Brother Sleece, when He looked on the crowd, when He looked on the villages, He was moved with compassion. Now, I don't know what moved the priest. Probably His holiness and His righteousness, His self-righteousness. Amen? I don't know what moved the Levite. Maybe he had a job to do. Maybe he was in a hurry. But I know what moved the Samaritan. Amen? And it wasn't his business. It wasn't his own. His religion. It was his compassion. Oh, hallelujah. He was moved with compassion on this poor man that had fell among thieves and been beaten. So what's he do? He doesn't hustle on by. He doesn't go to the other side of the street, but like Peter and John, he stops. Amen. We need some church people that will slow down long enough and see that the field is ready for the harvest. The crop is ready to be picked. Amen. Listen, when back, we, we're having some hard times here in the United States, if you don't know it. The economy's not doing good. The housing market, the unemployment, all that stuff. And it seems like one weather thing right after another. I know we don't have it as bad as some of these other countries, and I'm not saying we do, but I'm telling you, the harder times get on people, the easier, more, more susceptible they are to listening to you. Because they look for answers. They're hurting, or they're, 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 they're stressed out, or they're, they're concerned about what's going on. The field is widened to harvest, and this man, the Bible says he was moved with compassion, and he went to him. Now listen to that. He went to him. He didn't stand over there and say, well, if he comes over here where I'm at, I'll help him. That's what we do a lot of times. We come in on Sunday morning, we open our doors, and we wait. Amen. Well, if they need help, they'll come to me. We might have to go to them. Amen. Yeah. He went to Him. You get something this morning. Amen. If you wake up long enough to listen to me. He went to Him. Amen. He bound up His wounds. He poured in the oil and the wine. And then what's He do? He sets Him on His own beast. And brings him to an end. He picks up this dying man, or he's beat up, looked like he's dying, and puts him on his own beast. Now, what? If he's riding his beast, what did the Samaritan do? He walked. Amen. You've seen them old westerns. I know Brother Bill's a big western buff. Amen. You get somebody's half dead or something, ain't but one horse. You put them on the horse, you get the reins, and you walk. That's what this Samaritan did. So he goes out of his way. He spends his time. He winds up spending his money. Why? Because he's moved with compassion. You know why you didn't put nothing in the offering plate this morning? I ain't talking to the people here. I know they did. Because you're not moved with compassion. If we had the compassion of Christ like we're supposed to have, 
It wouldn't hurt so bad when we pulled something out of our wallet and put it in the offer plate. Amen? This man right here, at least what I can read, he didn't give no second thoughts. He didn't spend no time pondering, do I have time to fool with this guy? Do I really have the money to go to the expense of paying somebody to take care of him? No, because he was moved with it. Where you been, boy? Moved with, I need you to amen me this morning. Moved with the compassion of Christ. Amen. He stops. He goes over there. He puts some bandages on. He takes oil and wine. That costs money. Amen. That costs money. Oh, you might be able to get somebody to help you today as long as they ain't got to be out of no pocket cash. Amen. But the minute they got to be out of pocket, well, I'll see you. I got things to do. I got to hurt my wife's a call. Amen. Some reason or another, they got to get away. But this man pours in the oil and the expensive oil and the expensive wine, takes him and sets him on his own beast, and then leads him. I don't know how far from, from the place he was going where he was at. I don't know how far it was to town. Amen. But this man, according to at least what I read, didn't sit around and think, well, I don't know if I can do this or not. No. He takes care of the situation at hand. Why? Because he's moved with compassion. When we can get enough Christians that care more about other people than they do themselves, we'll be able to get more workers in the field and somebody bringing in the harvest in these last days the souls that are dying and going to hell while the church sits inside their walls, sits on their blessed assurance as Brother Mike says and don't care that the world is going to hell. Move with compassion. It won't be a hard thing for you to get up and go to church. It won't be hard for you to be a witness to those people at work. It, you won't consider it a shameful thing. Oh, I don't want them to know. I go down there to that Holy Roller Church. So I'll laugh at their dirty jokes. I'll use some of the same cuss words they do. I wish the Lord would let me. I'd line you up and slap your jaws. You have the answer that these people need. It'd be the same thing today if people all around us were dying and we held the cure. But we didn't tell nobody. I don't want to get involved. Brother Sleece, I don't want to, I don't want to look bad. I don't want to get involved in their situation. So just let them die and go to hell. Somebody will shake you like a dish rag. Amen. We need to get enough concern in our life that we can't sleep at night unless we have spent some time saying, God, save the lost before it's too late. We need to get enough of a vision or a glimpse of hell to realize that millions upon millions of people soul hangs in the balance and you can do something to point them in the right direction today. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. God's people went on strike a long time ago. Amen. We need to get back in the field and get back to work and see souls saved. Amen. Amen. I know that I'm a pastor. I know that we have this church. But I ain't satisfied with just keeping it inside these four walls. Amen. I told the man yesterday, I'm a pastor, but I have the heart of an evangelist. And you better. Amen. You better. They got talking about numbers. And I tried my best to talk him out of that. The first thing people want to know is, is your church growing? And they don't mean spiritually. They mean how many seats do you have full? Yeah. Amen? Just because you got a bunch of people don't mean you're growing. Right. Amen? Amen? Just because you got a bunch of people don't mean that you're adults or spiritually mature. You may be running a daycare. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, amen, that's what most of it is. Amen? Running a daycare. You come in on Sunday morning and the pastor gives you your passy. Amen? Soothes your hurts, bandages your boo-boos. And then sends you out the door to live like you want to live until next Sunday when you come in. But I tried to tell him. And I'll tell the enemy this morning. Amen. I don't intend to allow numbers to affect whether I stay or whether I go. Until we get new orders from headquarters, we ain't going nowhere. Amen. Amen. But I ain't satisfied with just keeping the Word of God inside these four walls. We hear from people every week Amen. that are watching over the internet. Thank God for Brother Rodney and Brother Tyler yeah. video on the stuff. Yeah. Mostly Brother Rodney. Brother Tyler lost his interest. 
for uploading the videos. We hear from people every week that are listing a CD, cassette, radio, internet. I ain't satisfied with that either. I want to do more. Amen? You better not find yourself to the place to where you, well, here I am, and I'm satisfied with not reaching out any farther than I can reach. We all must have the heart of an evangelist. This Samaritan had the heart of an evangelist, the heart to reach out, the heart of compassion. Jesus had the heart of an evangelist. Amen? The heart of compassion to reach out to those that were lost and undone. The heart that would turn to the disciples and say, pray that the, that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into His field to see the harvest brought forth. That's what we need to be praying today. And this man, the Bible says, he picks him up and he puts him on his beast and he takes him to an inn. And he took care of him. He didn't stop there. The Bible says when it got time on the morrow when he had to leave in verse 35, he took out two pence and he gave them to the host, the man that owned the inn there, the guy who read it, and said to him, take care of him. And whatever else you spend besides this, I'll give it back to you when I return. Had compassion. Too many times the church is satisfied with our four and no more. And we can sit today, and I'm closing. We can sit today and we can excuse ourselves. We can say, please have me excused. Y'all remember the sermon. Y'all remember Jesus' example about the man who threw the great wedding party and he sent out and said, go tell my guests to come. And every one of them, the Bible says, all of them with one, at one time, with one consent, begin to say, please have me excused. Amen. That's what we do with the work of God. I'm disabled. I can't do nothing for God. Mm -hmm. I can't sing. I can't do nothing for God. God understands. Oh, yeah, He does. Probably better than what you want Him to. He understands. He understands so much so that He said unto the least of these, if you've done it to them, you've done it to Me. Amen. We leave the harvest to rot on the vine. Walk past people. You see those people that went up to the temple that day to pray? They didn't just walk past that lame man. They walked past Jesus. Amen. Does His Word not say, if you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto Me? When they spit on that lame man, they didn't just spit on that lame man. They spit on Jesus. When you stab your brother in the back, you ain't just stabbing your brother in the back. You're stabbing Jesus. When you gossip against your brother, you're not just gossiping against your brother. You're gossiping against Jesus. Oh, that brings it down where the rubber meets the road. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for us to be moved by something other than the things of the world. It's time for us to be moved with compassion. Amen. And we can sit on our couch and we can excuse ourselves out of doing anything for God and we can say God understands. Yeah, He does. He understands better than what you think. And next week we'll see just how much. Brother Billy, you mean with the great response you've got this morning, you're going to continue this. I can't preach nothing else till he tells me to move on. Amen. So if you don't like it, we'll be here at 11 o'clock next Sunday. And then you can come the next Sunday. Maybe we'll be preaching something else. Amen? But next Sunday we're going to find out just how much God understands your excuses. Amen? Amen. We're going to find out just how much God understands the fact that you spend so much time at His table and no time in His fields. We're going to find out how much God understands, Brother Rodney, the fact that souls are dying and lost and undone and we're at Walmart at 5 a.m. fighting over a waffle maker. Oh, this don't seem like the Christmassy, festive kind of sermon, does it? Amen? It's time we start caring about somebody besides us. It's time we got a vision of the lost souls that are lost and hurting. Amen. Amen. It's time we got out away from the table and went and worked in the field. You got the strength. Paul said, you're to the place now you ought to be teaching others. But I'm still having to give you milk because you're a baby. It's time for us to grow up. Amen. Amen. Time for us to grow up. Somebody else have something this morning before we go?